Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 55th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers titled Second Chance. This episode starts at the Youth Center where Ernie is posting a piece of paper up to let all the kids know who is on the junior soccer team. He walks over to Jason and Zach, and Jason asks why one kid looks bummed out. Roger. Jesus. Jason, great deduction skills. Jason suggests a second chance to everyone, and Ernie says that if it were up to him, he'd do just that. And Zach points out that it is up to him, so here we go. Anyways, Fincer has made the Sacadillo monster ball who is charging and will be sent down after the Rangers as soon as it's done. At school, the 16s talk about how Zach and Jason are going to train Roger. And yeah, Bulk and Skull steal Zach's soccer ball and hit it around, hitting Miss Appleby and Tommy, who hits the wall, damaging his communicator. Yeah, that's gonna be how we're gonna get Tommy out of a fight this week. Then after everyone has left, Tommy's communicator goes off and Zordon says that Tommy contacted him and Zordon ends the discussion with Zordon out. Just amazing. Then in class, where Tommy is learning about the survival of the fittest, his communicator goes off and Miss Appleby asks him to turn off his pager because I forgot it was 1994. She ends up taking his communicator from him and putting it into a drawer with a lot of weird other stuff. We see Zack and Jason attempting to teach Roger to play soccer and it's not going well. Aren't they supposed to be in class too? Rita is also watching this and she straight up says that kid is terrible. <laughs> God bless her. She wants to send the monster down, but Goldar says that the monster isn't fully charged, so they need to start off with putties. Roger says that Jason and Zack are just wasting their time, and we learn about how patience is the key to, you know what, fuck it, the, the putties show up. Then Rita gets mad and says to just send down the Sacadillo anyways, and he rolls down a hill while the putties kick it around before it comes right at Jason and Zack, who leap out of the way dramatically. Then the ball just starts to fly while the two punch and kick it. Trini, Kim, and Billy are at the youth center, and then they bail right away when Zordon contacts them, and they teleport there with Trini, who then says that she's gonna stay over here with Roger. I feel like Twee Trang was severely underutilized. The teens have a bitchin' putty fight with the ball flying around in the background while Ron Wasserman's combat plays. This show really shines when they just let the actors do flips and stuff. Then Sacadillo and the putties just disappear. At the command center, they look at the viewing globe to see the monster as it is when it's unraveled. Alpha says that he can't get a hold of Tommy, and then we cut to Tommy showing up in detention to get his stuff back. The other rangers say, screw this, and it's morphin time. The rangers attempt to use their blade blasters against the monster and fail miserably to Ron Wasserman's I know a place. Meanwhile, Tommy is going through Miss Appleby's stuff to get his own stuff back when she walks in. Back at the fight, the monster seems to be getting stronger thanks to his charging thingamajig, and the rangers try to use the tower formation that hasn't been seen since around Episode 10-ish? Has no effect before he just turns into a ball and rolls through them, and the putties show up and throw rocks at them before they just kick the monster at them. Alpha finally gets in contact with Tommy in the hallway of the high school, and he just screams about how it's morphin time right there and then. Whatever, Green Ranger just shows up and is of course saving the asses of everyone because Tommy. With their power weapons, all six hit the monster, and Rita decides that's enough of that, and makes Sakadillo grow. The core five rangers call out their dinosaurs and form the Megazord while Tommy calls out the Dragonzord, and together they fight the monster. After a less than spectacular showcase from the three giants in which Sakadillo just turns into the ball, and Zack comes out with the genius plan to just hit him when he's not a ball, and he says to hit him with a power sword, so Jason calls it down and they kill that weird ass monster that was probably a pangolin to begin with. At the youth center, the second triads have happened and it looks like everyone got onto the team anyways, and somehow, Roger became the team captain. That's a great lesson for kids. Try something for 30 seconds and you'll probably get it. Then Bulk and Skull show up and Skull has goop on his hands for some reason and he tries to throw a soccer ball and it comes back and hits them spilling over innocent milkshakes. Cool. The ending of this episode is weird. Why did Skull have that stuff on his hands? I don't understand. Other than that, it's a pretty medium episode. The show keeps shoehorning in kid actors where it doesn't need to happen, and it's unfortunate because the monster alone was cool enough. This show is truly lucky that they have some awesome martial artists as principal actors and amazing Japanese footage to thrive off of, or else the show definitely would have been canned way earlier. How will the next episode fare? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you.